Presenting. You just get... Is it okay? The Stamp Media Lab Ghost. <laughs> I'm Steve O'Keefe, Executive Director of the Stanton Media Lab, and I'm here to tell you a very scary story about our very own Stanton Media Lab ghost. Now, people with long memories remember when the Stanton, back when the Stanton Media Lab first began. It was in this old rickety building down on the wharf in Stanton. The building must have been hundreds of years old. And when you came into the Stanton Media Lab, you had to climb these rickety stairs that were like something out of a nightmare. Uh, some stairs are taller than others and some slanted and it was all sort of like a fun house just going up the stairs to get into the, into the offices. And then in our offices, we were often besieged by strange shrieking noises from the pipes in the building and other sounds in the building that would permeate in our space. And there was always a little bit of black soot in the air from some fire that had happened there. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's how the ghost got there. It's from the fire. So one morning, it was right a time of year like this, right around Halloween, when it's crisp in the air and there's pumpkins everywhere. And uh, I had come to work and something wasn't right. The cover was off of all the audio equipment and the door to the closet was open, which isn't usually open. So I went in the closet to investigate if anything was missing. It didn't look like anything was missing. And that's when my audio director, Coley, arrived for the day. And I said, Coley, were you here earlier? He, he said he wasn't here. And so then that got us thinking, it seems like somebody's been here. So we started looking around. Well, a little while later, you know, we went to the bathroom and looked in there. And then we looked, there's one other, one other office on the same floor as us. This is down on the old wharf in Stanton. And we noticed the door to the other office was open. Okay, now this may not be unusual for most people, but in this case it was very strange because the fellow who had that other office was some kind of an investigator and that door was never unlocked. If he came out of the door to say hello to you, he locked it when he came out and then unlocked it and locked it when he went back in. He locked it before he went to the restroom uh, and then unlocked it when he came back from the restroom. So that door was never unlocked for more than a few seconds. So now, not only did we have this disruption in our space, but we had an unlocked door on the investigator's office. That got us really kind of nervous. So then we started looking around and we made some calls we didn't call the police, we called the landlord, we tried to contact the, the, other, the investigator in the other office to see what, what could have possibly be uh, happening here. And then uh, after we made some calls, we decided to go down and uh, look around to see if anything was amiss downstairs. So down the crooked steps we went, Coley and I, uh, the slanting crazy steps to the street, and we got to the bottom and what happened? The door was locked. The door was locked to the, our office even though we were inside. We'd been locked in, but neither of us locked the door from the inside and there was nobody else in the building. So now we really had a mystery. We were locked into our office and what we surmised had happened was that when I came to work I surprised somebody there. They hid in our neighbor's office and waiting for an opportunity to sneak out. And then when we were unawares, they snuck out of that office, went down and locked the, the door to lock us in for some reason and left. We couldn't figure out why they would want to lock us in. It didn't make any sense. So now we had a real <laughs> mystery going 
and it got the landlord came and they were looking at everything and we we got a hold of uh, the tenant who's in the other other space he said he thought he left it unlocked when he left uh, town on an airplane and uh, would we pr please lock it up for him uh, he didn't seem to think that there was foul play or, or when we described the contents in the room, he didn't think that anything was missing or out of the ordinary. So, um, so this went on and we contacted the people downstairs and we said, did you have, was anybody here today that would have locked the door uh, when they left? And they assured us no one had been there. And so we went over to our next door neighbors, Coley and I, and I asked him if he'd seen anyone around the place. And he said, no, he hadn't seen anyone. And I told him that if I saw anyone, I would let him know. And if Coley saw anyone, we would let the National Enquirer know because Coley can't see anything. So, uh, so that was a pretty good uh, joke anyway. And, uh, and then we just went back about our business. Well, we did find out later, uh, what's, how, how many days later was it, Coley, that we learned what happened at the door lock? It was, a, it was uh, I think, a couple days later. Yeah, was, a few it? days later, the neighbors downstairs said, oh, I forgot to tell you, one of our volunteers did come in the other morning, and she did lock the door when she left and she didn't realize anyone else was here. So it turns out that the Stanton Media Lab ghost could be just a series of circumstances that got strung together that are nothing at all. Or maybe the Stanton Media Lab ghost is something more. 